But let's get into this next segment, segment number two of the Trust the Bank podcast. What we're going to be talking about today is something that we we reference it all the time, whether it's in the live with the viewers. Also, shout out to the most recent live with the viewers we did Saturday at 5 p.m. Absolutely amazing. So many awesome moments from there. So y'all make sure, I, I'm telling y'all, y'all want to make sure you come to this next one. There may be something that happens during the show that y'all may be interested in. Um, so y'all should probably show up. But, uh, you know, that'll be Saturday at 5 p.m. Most likely I'll send out the date and time whenever. But in terms of this video, we talk about it all the time as just kind of a reference point, but we haven't actually fully done any discussion on it. And that would be T. Martin and Keith Williams. You know, Keith Williams, the new passing game coordinator, T. Martin, the new wide receiver coach. Now, overall, these guys um, have worked with plenty of players in the past that have succeeded very well. T. Martin, I believe, worked with Juju Smith-Schuster. He worked with uh, Marquise Lee. He worked with Amon Ross St. Brown, mm -hmm. all guys at USC currently in the NFL. He also worked with like Sam Darnold and things like that. Former USC um, offensive coordinator turned wide receiver coach at University of Tennessee, or is it Tennessee University? I honestly don't know which one. The Volunteers, whichever one that one is. Um, and then Keith Williams has worked with, I believe, like Devontae Adams, and I know he's worked with Sammy Watkins. I believe Tyree Kill. I I know all of those names have been worked with by the two guys. I may be mixing up who's worked with who. But they, there's some very impressive names on that list, especially when you look at the Devontae Adams, because that's who Rashad Bateman plays similarly to. Uh, Devontae Adams and Keenan Allen. Um, very crisp route runners and things like that. But Joshua, what do you think that bringing these guys really helps the Ravens with? Like, what Have, have you seen anything, whether it's um, in the Ravens uh, – what do they call it? The mic'd up moments uh, at the rookie mini camp, or they even released a special on those. Or, you know, they tweet all the time. They seem well, pretty interactive. What What are your thoughts on these guys as new Ravens coaches? I definitely say this. Um, I think um, before David Kelly, I think we had Bobby Ingram. Um, Bobby Ingram, if y'all remember, he was he played for Seattle Seahawks. He wasn't the best wide receiver, but he definitely was a good wide receiver at his time um, in his time. Um, I believe what, that's when Matt Hasselbeck was his quarterback and Sean Alexander was still on the team. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I remember I remember those days. But uh, <laughs> anyway, um, I, with T. Martin and Keith Williams, let's 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 really dive into it. We're talking about two young. We're talking about two guys that's still that's still, you know, fairly young. that actually can relate to their young guys that are actually uh, training up, training up and working out. Um, I did see in the, in the mic ups. Um, with uh, with um, Rashad Bateman, how he was running his routes, and they was like, you know, ooh, you know, it just looked real good. The thing, the thing about them, they are really, uh, they are really about the fundamentals. They're really about getting those developments down, those 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 crisp route runs. You know, really learning those those steps to take before uh, making your breaks and, and things things of that nature. You know, so you know, it's like. It's almost like when you see um, when Deion Sanders see uh, Chad Johnson. You know, every time they always line up against each other, and they always talk about you know what they would have done. You know, when you got a guy like T. Martin that's played quarterback, that gives he actually helps give wide receivers insight because like, look, I played quarterback before as a quarterback. I would want my wide receiver here. So this is the steps you need to take. You know, this is this is when you need to make your break. All right, bring your steps, do this, do that, you know, to make yourself better. And these guys are actually listening to it. And, you know, uh, Keith and T are actually taking a liking to um, Hollywood, which is a great thing, you know, especially with him going into his third year. Of course, he does his off-season workouts and everything. But, you know, to seem like, you know, they actually got somebody that they want in there, Um that they actually can relate to, that they actually don't mind playing for. You know, I'm not and I'm not about to say, oh, you know, what these relationships being built with the wide receivers, it's going to tear away from the uh, offensive coordinator. No, uh, G Rose the OC. I mean, until further notice. I mean, if if there is a change and they end up moving up with one of those guys, then you know, I pray and hope the best for the team. So you know, they're they're definitely doing their jobs and everything. So. 
you know, with them doing their jobs, with them teaching them the, 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 the fundamentals and developing on their skills and showing, and they're seeing the progression in those OTAs and um, and the mini cap. I'm just looking forward to seeing it produce on the field because, you know, we have been we have been a struggling team when it came to wide receivers. So to see them actually make the change and let go of David Cully and bring these two guys in that has a good that both have a great resume, it shows the um the dedication and the determination that they are into put, uh implementing a pass game for this upcoming season. Absolutely. And my favorite part about Keith Williams and T. Martin is their energy and positivity. Mm -hmm. You see what they're doing, you know, they're running up the sideline or, you know, running up the field with them and like, oh, you know, they're hyping them up. Yeah. You know, that's the type of thing that I, I always liked out of a coach was something, somebody that, you know, was getting very excited. I've had the coaches that, you know, are very tough and I've had the coaches that are very excited. The very excited ones, you want to play for them more. You, you, you take their stuff, you know, more critically. Now, if you are somebody that is an absolute legend, like if you're learning how to box and you're talking to Muhammad Ali and he's being and he's giving you tough stuff, you're going to listen to him because he's Muhammad Ali. You know, you're going to let, you know, maybe the greatest boxer of all time, uh, probably the most important boxer of all time, like that type of thing. Like you, you were, you have that respect already. And when you have that respect, you're more likely to be listening to them. But if you don't respect somebody, you know, if you don't know who your coach is, when you come in, like, like David Cully, if you get drafted by the Ravens and, and David Cully. Okay. David Cully, the worst. Okay. David Cully does not have a good reputation. Like he has not had a lot of success. So when you're a guy like Hollywood and you get drafted and your co your, your pass game coordinator is like, I'm not going to call you Hollywood until, you know, you actually play like Hollywood. Why would you be working hard for this guy? Why? Like, and then he even brought it up at his Texans press conference. David Cully was talking about, he's like, yeah, like with, with Marquise Brown, I don't call him Hollywood because he doesn't play like a Hollywood. Like, what are you doing? You're not, who do you think you are? You know, if you're Bill Belichick, maybe you can say that, but you're David Cully. You've had like one 1,000 yard receiver since 2005. Okay, you can't be somebody that's going to just take shots at young rookies that are your first round picks. Whereas, you know, T. Martin and Keith Williams, we hear about them. Oh, look at the energy. Look at the excitement. Look at what they're saying. And then you see their tweets. And after the game, after practice and things like that, you see, I, I see Keith Williams all the time. I believe it's Keith Williams all the time. Um, I think T. Martin does it as well, but like they'll put like motivational things and they'll be tweeting them out. And it's like really cool to read. And they'll talk about, Oh, you got to learn the route so you can. I don't remember the exact tweet, but it's like, um, you got to practice, and then the practice leads to like consistency and then performance and all this stuff. Like, they're positive and all this stuff, and it helps. Now, when did you ever hear the name David Cully at minicamp? I, I when it's he got crazy. fired, I had no idea who he was. It's I was crazy. like, it's crazy when your position coaches are getting so much more praise. Like, you would think, you know. Oh, you know John Harbaugh. When you, or you know when you when you when you talk when you go to New England, you're gonna always hear about Bill Belichick or even you know Kansas City. I would say they're taking the Andy Reid's taking the he's taking a step back for uh um, the enemy for, for the OC to uh, yeah. actually shine, and which is respectful. I like that, but you know all these years, all you hear at the Ravens, it used to be it would be John Harbaugh. Dean Pease, when he was here, yep. now Wink. Now we done shifted because you never heard about Bobby Ingram. You never heard about the tight ends coach. You barely hear about Keith Urban. Um, we heard about Zachary Orr uh, just for the simple fact that, you know, uh, that he played with us and then, you know, he became linebacker coach. Now he he worked his way up. Shout out to him and congratulations to, his, to, the, uh, to the job over at um, Jacksonville. I don't believe – I don't believe – you know. So we do do something good here at, in the Ravens organization. But now you're hearing, you know, offensive, 
offensive uh, guys, specialty guys, you're now hearing about wide your wide receiver coach and your passing game specialist. It's like, wow, that's a breath of fresh air. That's a good bottle of water, Deer Park, to be exact. <laughs> so, you know, it, you know, it makes you more excited because all the controversy and, you know, and everything they say about Lamar Jackson, everything they say about us not having, you know, wide receivers, no, no development, no development for all the years that we've been um, an a, a NFL team is, is, is exciting. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I don't think I've ever been more excited to see what the Ravens do on offense, like in terms of their, their play calls and things like that, because how much of an effect do you think David Cooley had in the passing game? Like, yeah, we, we clown on Greg Roman and Greg Roman has a lot of say. He has most of the say. But now he actually has guys that are working hard that you hear about that are getting praise from wide receiver. Like Mark Andrews has talked about. It. He's like, yeah, you know, from the things that I've talked about with them and seen from them, I love them. You know, what they're helping the wide receivers a ton. And Sammy Watkins talks about him. And Marquise has talked about him. And Bateman's talked about him. They're all like, yeah, these guys are great. When mm -hmm. everybody on the offense is saying these guys are great. I would expect the offensive coordinator to maybe listen to those guys that everybody loves, especially when your job is, I think, perceptively on the hot seat. Whether or not he's been told by John Harbaugh or Eric DaCosta, you know, hey, man, you got to step up. I don't know. However, from what the media and what fans are saying, you know, you got to hear it. You, you, Unless you just live in don't ever watch sports radio or listen to sports radio or watch any sports television. Greg Roman has to know that people are unhappy with his performance. I don't think he, he thinks that, Oh no, they're wrong. I think he understands like, yeah, we got to be more successful. And he's talked about it. Like, yeah, we gotta, we gotta do these things. All the reporter questions. Well, when everybody's also hyping up these guys, he's going to take an ear when nobody's hyping up David Cully, David Cully is like, Hey man, maybe you should go do this. <laughs> He's like, man, shut up. I don't want to listen to you. What have you ever done? Whereas right. T and Keith are like, hey, yeah, not only are we, we going to get the wide receivers to run better routes, we're going to help give them better route concepts so then they can flourish to help your run game, Greg Roman, flourish as well. And I think that's going to be a mutually beneficial arrangement between the passing game coordinator and wide receiver coach with the OC to help develop a balanced but incredibly effective offense because I think when people when we say balance, it's very different than what other people say is balance. Like the Ravens balance, we still throw more than we run. It's still the NFL yeah. in 2021. We throw more than we run, but we're a super run heavy balanced offense. That's the goal. Super run heavy means you run like 40% of the time. <laughs> Like maybe 45% of the time is like, oh my goodness, they run so much. Other teams are like, no, we don't run. AKA the Bills. The Bills don't run the football. <laughs> I feel bad for Zach Moss and Devin Singletary. They just don't run the ball. But like, we have guys that are going to help out the passing game, and I am so excited about them. I don't think I've ever been more excited for a positional coach slash pass game coordinator in my entire life, mostly because I didn't even know who David Cooley was because you did not know anything about him. And then you would hear things like, Oh yeah, you're not Hollywood. Like that's what everybody calls him. Like what? It just doesn't make any sense. So it, it get, having good news about those guys is just amazing. But I don't know. Do you have anything else to add on to that, Joshua? Or should we wrap it up? Man, it's just, you know, like I said, a breath of fresh air, bringing that, bringing that new nuance, positivity into the locker room, you know, Obviously, we're doing something right, you know, especially with the different positional coaches from linebacker to running backs, um, offensive line, defensive line that, you know, we got we got guys coming, leaving and coming. And we, I mean, we definitely try to retain as many guys as we can. But, you know, um, the Raven organization is, in my opinion, is one is almost one of the most solid uh, organizations when it comes to, you know, um, owner to coach the next one right next to it or right above it would be new England. Yeah. I think, I think overall the Ravens just do it right. That's why the Ravens have almost yeah. always been contending and competing ever since they, you know, came to Baltimore, but 
That's going to do it for this segment. Thank you, everybody, for watching on YouTube. If you're watching, make sure to subscribe for Daily Ravens content and check out the segment tomorrow, or you can go to the podcast and listen to it right now.